Hallo zusammen! I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I watch certain movies, shows and I listen to music, certain bands and stuff, I wonder, okay, what makes them them? What makes them great? To say it with Rick Beato, great channel by the way. What makes the Rammstein work? What makes them them? How do they work as a band? So let's try to find that out today. I want to give my personal opinion, my personal reasons for them being as awesome as they are. Let's find that out. I think when one really tries to sum up several different potential reasons for why they could be so massively successful internationally, well, there is one thing that really comes to mind immediately, at least to me, which is their provocative nature, especially in early years. But what's that all about? While this might be the most obvious and simple reason why the project Rammstein has worked internationally despite them singing in German, some would also say because, it isn't wrong nonetheless. In my opinion, the band made some important stylistic decisions right from the get-go. Even though their style has also changed a little bit throughout the years, they didn't have to find their style on their first few albums. They had it right from 95's Herzeleid onwards. The sonically basic instrumental approach, paired with hooky, short, very expressive verbalizations of German words, in addition to creative music videos, a raw, heavy production, all that and more aspects instantly formed an already painted picture in people's minds. They didn't have to find out what the band is all about, they got it delivered right away. Clever but also risky choice, of course, because if that whole approach hadn't worked, if their whole idea and ideology, if that makes sense, wouldn't have worked, Worked, well, that would have been a big problem. Nowadays, as an internationally very successful established musical act, the band still has some provocative moments when it comes to lyrics, topics and especially still their music videos, which are shot by a pool of usually recurring directors to keep a sort of distinctive visual Rammstein style. The amount of in-your-face provocation has decreased massively compared to their formative years though. That of course also has to do with shifting provocative and moral lines in society because of the internet, social media and other socio-cultural aspects. And also, let's be honest, there aren't too many really big and universal taboo topics left. Pretty much everyone has seen, read or at least heard about everything there is. That surely could have turned into a problem for the band in terms of branding, self-marketing and the overall appearance. When I first listened to their latest self or untitled 2019 album, I was missing something indeed and that definitely was a big provocative topic. Not because I really need that to enjoy their stuff, but rather because I was used to expect it from them. The album does have a few critical songs and topics, for instance Zeig Dich, Show Yourself or Reveal Yourself, which is about child abuse in the Catholic Church, I think, and all that. But it's still fair to say that the album is the least provocative one the band has made to date. And I don't mean that in a negative way necessarily, quite the opposite. When you keep everything I've mentioned before in mind, I actually think, whether it was a conscious decision by Till or not, the album still works well despite of the lack in comparably shocking, surprising moments and it might be beneficial to the band as well, since trying really hard and somewhat artificially maybe even, to find really provocative topics these days could easily turn into a never-ending endeavor and so I'm glad that they didn't choose that path. Another big factor in the international success of Rammstein not only has to do with the choice of lyrical topics, but also in the really clever ways Till Lindemann knows how to deliver and express things. The true art of Rammstein songs lyrically is that most of them have really basic, simple, sing-along, hooky lyrics which seem extremely bland even and obvious on the surface and therefore accessible to many people even when they just listen to the band in the background. However, at the same time, most of these songs and lyrics have at least two semantic layers to them. They are really ambiguous. Implementing ambiguities the way Till likes to do requires a contextual understanding of how the German language works, what expectations of listeners usually are like, 
and how to subtly play with them, how to surprisingly shift them around. Mostly this happens through the general semantics of words, their meaning, but Till even plays with some sonic ambiguities here and there, for instance in Du Hast. Just by hearing the title without seeing it written out and all, you couldn't tell if it means you have or you hate in German. That sonic ambiguity works perfectly in the context of the song. More about that though in my video about this tune. To me, Till is a master in expressing things in a simple yet poetic and sophisticated way. His lyrics work in multiple ways, depending on the listener's perspective, his level of comprehension and experience. They are fascinating to young kids who might not know anything about the fairy tale influences of songs like Rosenrot and Dalai Lama, because Till sounds evil and mysterious when he sings, but also low, warm captivating. People who not only understand but also comprehend what he's singing about can dive even deeper and, with a certain linguistic comprehension and contextual knowledge, enjoy the various subtle facets and details woven into verses, lines, phrases, sometimes even single words. But still the question remains what makes German songs work internationally. I mean, many people can't comprehend what they are about, you know, so how did they do it? The long-term Swedish Rammstein producer Jakob Hellner really summed this up in the Reise Reise making of. It's Till's general intonation, his tonal range, verbal stressing and the overall expressive verbalization of mostly ordinary German words. Quite often Till has a tendency to overstress certain letters and vowels and in this case also an umlaut, the ü in fühlen in ich will. The way he sings it goes fühlen, even though it's fühlen in daily German. It's these little details, also the world R of course, which isn't part of his personal dialect at all by the way, when he really speaks colloquially and in daily Deutsch, daily German. But it really adds a uniqueness and also connects the dots in terms of their provocative nature, the metaphors in some of the songs and of course also maybe the imagery that might come along with it. It might remind them of something like Nazis, the Third Reich, Hitler and whatnot. But if you really dive deeper into Rammstein songs, for instance Links 2, 3, 4, you quite quickly notice that they aren't what they seem to be just and simply judging from the sound of Till when he sings. So don't get them wrong. Singing this expressively also stems from a common way of intonating German on a classic theater stage and opera. It's Bühnendeutsch, stage German, and also might just occur automatically since singing quite low can also result in that idiolect, a personal individual way of speaking, verbalizing things, for instance also in certain contexts. Another thing the band has really mastered, and I sort of admire them for that, is keeping a mystery to them. Yes, there is some private information on the band members that became public throughout the years, but compared to many other internationally acclaimed and popular acts, Rammstein as a whole, and especially Till Lindemann as the frontman, celebrate a quite healthy public life, private life balance, compared to many other people, honestly. Till and the whole band basically rarely give interviews, if any at all, which also adds up to him and the whole band being sort of mystified still. He can be the total opposite in being very, very expressive and drastic even powerful on stage, but that's literally just his stage persona. People might criticize that approach because they might say, okay, well, that's fake, that's artificial, whatever, but I personally really think this is a smart and healthy move. Even given the possibility that he just might not want to give interviews because he's a rather shy person and doesn't want to be in the spotlight and the limelight all the time when he's not on stage performing, this still evokes respect in me and really keeps him being mystified to some degree. So in the best sense of the word, Till Lindemann is a performer. In being that he and the whole band manages to be charismatic, enigmatic and drastic and that's by and large the whole look of the band to many people, I guess. It's certainly also the seeming contradiction between serious, at least serious sounding lyrics and the band taking themselves not too seriously all the time, which becomes obvious when you watch making offs and behind the scenes material for instance. Apart from the heavy sound, simple yet effective hooks, layered lyrics and Till's expressive singing style, their live shows are simply superb and unparalleled. Even if you don't like their music, 
there is still sort of a chance you will simply enjoy their show for what it is. Meaning, it could easily also work without their specific music just as a complex, expensive show, a happening. Apart from maybe the first few shows in the mid-90s, the band has quickly picked up on a visually X and impressive live show style. Of course, it's also beneficial that in the late 90s, Till officially became a pyrotechnician so that he can also plan new effects and the like directly. It might be just a detail in the big Rammstein cosm, but having a band member who's directly involved and knows about those things in realizing these effects and all how that works, the production value, the whole show benefits from that in the end. So summing all this up, and there are even more things I could talk about, Rammstein is more than just a band. I mean, just add the typical Rammstein R, the R, and it makes them what they truly are, in my opinion, a brand. That is a massive achievement, which should never be underestimated. Yes, it's also part luck, coincidence, the right timing, the right place and all, but it's also hard work to see, to realize chances, to take them, to make something out of them and to keep them relevant and working and even maintaining them throughout more or less absent years. So why do I personally love Rammstein? There are many reasons for that and I can't really pinpoint that down to one single reason. And I don't think that is a bad thing necessarily. Quite the opposite, actually. I think that's a good thing, because it really shows how versatile this band is. But what do you think makes Rammstein as successful as they are? What are the potential reasons for that? Feel free to tell me in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, also don't forget to share it with other people, because that is the best way to support the channel. Thanks very much for doing that, and also thanks for watching. I'm your Vlog Dave. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.